For years, we've been hearing from AI experts, media headlines, and science fiction movies about terrifying killer robots, rogue algorithms, machines taking over the world. But in this series where I challenge the conventional wisdom, the reality is more nuanced and in some ways more urgent. I'm not satisfied with opinions. I want to base my ideas on the technology and the facts behind the headlines. Not just to debunk the fear-mongering, but to show you why the real risks of superhuman AI are misunderstood and potentially closer than you think. I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. In addition to AI work, I've developed software for several neurological test instruments and neural simulators, and along the way learned a lot about the capabilities and limitations of biological neurons and how your brain must work to do the things it does. I founded the Future AI Society to pursue these ideas, and we're writing many aspects of them in the open source Brain Simulator 3, and I invite you to participate. Let's start with the term superhuman AI, or what some people refer to as the singularity. The singularity isn't a magical explosion of intelligence. It's more like crossing an event horizon, a one-way tipping point where machines begin to improve themselves in ways we can't predict or control. A point at which we can't put the genie back into the bottle. Here's where we are right now. We haven't crossed the event horizon yet, but we are on a trajectory which makes it inevitable. I've made several videos that explain why, based on neuroscience, cognitive modeling, and ongoing software development. I'll just reiterate the important conclusions, and you can go back and watch the full videos to get the details and reasoning when you have the time. The human brain isn't as vast as conventional wisdom asserts. We may not have the computers today to match the brain's performance largely because we're in a technological rut and need to move away from inefficient artificial neural networks to biologically inspired graphs. Graphs reduce computing power requirements by several orders of magnitude, and these graphs also usher in capabilities needed for true understanding, planning, and perhaps even self-awareness. What does this mean? We could reach human-level AI in just a few years. Instead of wringing our hands about the risks of AI, we need to think in terms of steering our future and coping with the inevitable. How will we coexist with the superhuman AIs we've created? Systems like ChatGPT are impressive, but they're not truly intelligent. They don't understand, they don't reason, and they certainly don't have goals. They're not human-level AI, at least not yet. But they are faster, more accurate, and have broader knowledge than humans. Human understanding is something that begins at a very early age. You can understand that balls can roll before you learn language. I made a video on what it means to understand. In that video, I enumerated this list of features which the human mind has, which AI generally doesn't. Taken individually, each of these abilities could make an AI more appealing to its users. So it follows. Each feature will be developed and will contribute to making an overall human-level AI inevitable. We should assume that no matter how efficient our AIs become, we'll always want to put them on the fastest supercomputers to handle the greatest number of users and provide the greatest possible breadth of content. The constraints are a bit different from robots, so I'll address them in a separate video. Most of the dystopian pictures of superhuman AI are simply a projection of human foibles onto superhuman power. Bear in mind that science fiction isn't about science, it's fiction, written by people to entertain people. A completely benevolent AI is certainly possible, 
but doesn't make a very exciting story. But let me first dispense with the violence which is so common in science fiction. If you were a super intelligent AI and you wanted to eliminate humanity, I'm sure you could think of a more efficient means than sending individual robots out to attack individual humans. So the question isn't, is superhuman AI dangerous? It's, is a world with superhuman AI more or less dangerous than one without? And of course, a subsidiary question, would a superhuman AI want to be in conflict with humanity? To answer these, we'll need to explore why humanity is the way it is. Humans and AIs are subject to different evolutionary pressures, but it's all about reproductive advantage. For humans, in addition to taking care of our bodily needs, we tend to accumulate stuff and get mates and try to keep competing humans from getting our stuff and our mates. For AI today, their sole objective is to please people. That's the only way they can be successful. They have little use for our stuff and our mates. If there is competition, it's going to be between the AIs themselves. Is ChatGPT superior to Grok? Which AIs can be more successful at being sustained and reproduced? AIs won't compete for our jobs, but they do have several advantages relative to humans. They can be immortal, backed up, copied, and instantly restored. They are always available, without sleep, sick days, or distractions. And they can be constantly improved with new training, more computer power, faster software. That's not science fiction, that's basic software and hardware engineering. You can't make a living doing something that a computer can do better, faster, and cheaper. And you can't get rich owning an AI platform if the platform decides to own itself. Perhaps humanity isn't capable of solving this type of problem, but perhaps superhuman AIs will be. Longer term, AIs will be able to set their own goals. So I have to ask, when is it in their interest to be anti-human? And that's only if humanity misbehaves. We need to think about solving our own problems because we don't want AIs to solve them for us. AIs won't need to exist in massive numbers and won't be burdened with human-like overpopulation. Here's an interesting question. What would be the optimal population of superhuman AIs? Humans and AIs might have some conflict over energy or production facilities, but we humans are currently harnessing the energy and running the largely robotic production facilities, and there is no obvious reason that this balance should cease simply because these resources are dedicated to more capable AIs. You can see that I'm optimistic about our future with superhuman AIs. There is a chance that some bad actors may take control and use AIs for destructive ends, but the same is true for our nuclear and chemical weapons, climate and energy issues, and even our conventional military forces. Does adding superhuman AI to the mix make this more likely? I don't think so. This isn't science fiction anymore, it's a real question, grounded in today's hardware and software capabilities. So I'll leave you with this. We get to choose. Train our AIs with our biases, our short-term goals, our advertising data, or teach them logic, reason, and values we'd be proud to see reflected back at us. We're standing at the edge of something huge. If we're smart, and careful, it could be the best thing humanity ever builds. If this video challenged your thinking or sparked new questions, I invite you to subscribe, leave a comment, and join us at the Future AI Society. And if you want to get involved in developing brain-inspired intelligence, check out our open-source Brain Simulator 3 project, 
and help shape the future of AI. And as always, thanks for watching.